Greetings, everyone. Today is June 29th of 2020, the year of our Lord, and I wanted to just kind of cover some books that I thought would be beneficial for those who are inquiring into orthodoxy or any catechumens or anybody else, that matter, who has a appreciation for orthodox books. So I got them laid out here on my table. Um, so I got here, I got a book cover on this one, but it's the Orthodox Study Bible. This one's the prologue of Overed. This is Surprised by Christ by Reverend James, uh, it's either Bernstein or Bernstein, I don't remember. And then uh, The Search for Truth on the Path of Reasons, a really good book. And over here I got uh, Dorotheos of Gaza. And here I got The Law of God. And then uh, down here on the bottom I have uh, St. John Cassian's Conferences. And then The Mountain of Silence, The History of the Church by Eusebius. The Orthodox Church by Timothy Ware. And then I got The Way of a Pilgrim. And then I got some other books, some prayer books. So I have uh, the Orthodox prayer book here. And then it comes in a smaller pocket-sized version. Um, and then I also have the Jordanville prayer book. This is uh, my favorite one for doing pre-communion prayers. And then also, these are not books, but they're period, or I guess pamphlets, kind of, uh, the Orthodox Word uh, publication. So this is uh, done by St. Hermit Alaska Press. Uh, they come out, I think it's once a quarter, but these uh, are really great uh, reads. They are not dry at all, and I recommend um, getting a subscription to this if you don't have it. So I guess I'll um, go in order. So the Orthodox Study Bible is kind of the uh, the go-to um, Bible that a lot of Orthodox use for commentary. It has a really good commentary section. So if I can, uh, and it's got some icons in it as well. So basically, like your, uh, uh, so like you'll have the the scripture here, and then it'll have the commentary on the bottom. This in the Old Testament has the complete list of the Orthodox books. So if I can find an index here. Um, and so it goes over the Septuagint version of the Old Testament. Um, let's see if I can adjust my camera so that way it's easier to see. So we got here, we got the entire list of the Orthodox Old Testament. And then it also compares it here to the Roman Catholic and the Protestant versions. So as you can see, the Orthodox have a whole lot more books than the rest of uh, Christendom. And so, uh, so yeah, like I said, it goes over the Septuagint version of the Old Testament, and it's all the the arrangement is also different than uh, people using uh, the Protestant canon. So sometimes it's kind of difficult to get around, but the commentary is pretty top notch. It's got a lot of commentary, and then it'll also have little sections, uh, like little um, articles written according to topic, uh, interspersed throughout. So, like, here we go. we got an icon that's um, the three holy use in the furnace. Let's see if I can find a, one of the articles in here, but it might not be easy to find. So I definitely recommend this for anybody that's Orthodox, anybody that's looking into Orthodoxy. Um, because uh, one of the things that's uh, somebody coming maybe perhaps from Protestantism and used to having a lot of interpretations of the Old Testament being for like the end of the world, you find out that a lot of, uh, yeah, here we go. Here's like one of the articles that says the old types of Mary in the Old Testament. And then it's just, you know, a little about page size article. So a lot of the uh, prophecies in the Old Testament will um, be seen as prophesying the coming of Christ and the establishment of the church. So like in, in Daniel, for example, you have the statue that uh, Nebuchadnezzar sees in his vision. And it talks about the different kingdoms and then the kingdom that's set up. That's talking about the... the um, the, not, the one that's not made by human hands is the establishment of the church, and it's not seen as like some sort of millennial kingdom. Um, so anyway, so uh, Orthodox Study Bible, that's to me a, a must-get for anybody interested in Orthodoxy. It's this other one here. 
we got the prologue. This is uh, was compiled by Saint Nikolai Vil uh, Vilomirovich. And so basically what it is, so like today, for example, is June 29th. So I can go in here and go to June and then go to 29th. There we go. So it'll give a couple saints for the day. So today's the feast of the Holy Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul. And so it gives here a description of their life. And then I'll have a short hymn for the day. And then I'll have some reflections, which is kind of like a small sermon. And then a, con thing, uh, a contemplation, just something to think about, and then a short homily. So St. Nikolai Vilomirovich is, a very, is very good at writing. So I definitely recommend this. It comes in two volumes. So the first one's uh, January to June. The other one's July to December. So these are... Unfortunately, are not cheap though. So um, if you can't afford this, because these are like sixty dollars a piece, so one hundred twenty dollars for the set. If you can't um, afford that, there is a Orthodox calendar app, and I think it's available on iPhone and Android. And what it allows is uh, you can look up. Um, well, it, it'll go to the day that we're on. So like today, it would pop up on June twenty. Ninth, um, the app itself is on the old calendar, but you can also fast forward or uh, skip ahead in time 13 days to get on the new calendar. And then all the saints that are highlighted in red, you can click on their lives and it uh, pop ups their life. So it's very good for a replacement of the prologue if you can't afford it or if you want something that's just portable. And uh, but it doesn't have the little homilies for the day, but. Anyway, so then uh, this other one, Surprised by Christ by uh, Father James, is really good. It, uh, so the, he, his background story is he's an Orthodox Jew who became evangelical, and then after be, uh, becoming evangelical, he becomes an Orthodox priest. So uh, one of the things that he covers quite well is the atonement, um, and he covers some of the basics of orthodoxy. So he's coming from a Protestant mindset and then describes kind of the difference between like the way maybe Protestants would think about orthodoxy or Protestants would think about um, the scriptures and different things like the atonement and then compares it with the orthodox uh, perspective. So this is uh, pretty good. Also on some of the books that I recommend, these books can be purchased a lot cheaper or used so I normally hit up three websites. I'll hit up Amazon. I'll hit up um, abooks.com, then alibris.com. And so sometimes you can get books super cheap. And uh, like we're on Amazon, if you get a book, for example, for $1.25, well, you're going to probably pay $3.99 shipping. So that's like you're going to end up paying over $5 for the book. Where sometimes on abooks, you can find books that are really cheap, like $3.26, and it's free shipping. So... Um, the uh, Soul After Death by Father Seraphim Rose I ended up getting for, I think, less than $4 shipped free to my house. So the uh, Search for Truth on the Path of Reason, this is an excellent book. Um, it covers uh, kind of like ap apologetics and some basics about uh, orthodoxy. So here he kind of goes over um, the philosophy or in, of Western civilization, like very briefly, and then uh, kind of gives uh, some talks about like the transcendental argument of God, and so top notch. Um, I would definitely recommend this book. So this is uh, the, the Prokhorov Mo uh, Monastery Press. Um, so. Uh, and it's by Alexei. I don't know if that's Osipov or how that's how his last name's pronounced, but it's good stuff. So the other one here, Dorotheos of Gaza, the D uh, discourses and sayings, is a very good book. A lot of the stuff that's in here is actually um, covered in a lot of other Orthodox inter uh, intro to Orthodoxy books. So instead of like reading a lot of other. Um, books on the intro to orthodoxy, you can actually just uh, read Dorotheos's writings yourself. 
So like, and they're kind of according to topic here. So like part one is on renunciation, on humility, on conscience, on the fear of God, on the need for um, consultation, on a refusal to judge our neighbor, on self-accusation, and so on and so forth. So it's good stuff. The other one I have not read myself personally, but this is one of my wife's favorite books, and she hates reading. And this is actually, as you can tell, it's a fairly large book. Let's see, this is like, yeah, it's like six over 600 pages, but it has a lot of stuff in it. It's a very thorough book. So go over some of the stuff in the index here. So part one, basic concepts, the world about God, the attributes of God, prayer, sin, the sign of the cross, standing in bowels during prayer, different types of prayer, when God hears our prayers. Um, so, and then he covers the Old Testament. And then he goes and covers the New Testament as well. It's the New Testament, and then things about that, about Scripture. Then the Christian life, faith and life. And then the divine services of the Orthodox Church. So my wife highly rec recommends this one. So, I think I end up purchasing that one used. So this book here had a huge impact on me, um, on my conversion to orthodoxy. This is John Cassian's The Conferences. This is put out by a Catholic publisher, uh, Newman Press. Um, you can also get this uh, for free online, like a PDF, but I was tired of looking for footnotes through a PDF document. So I, and I liked it so much that I wanted it, my own copy. So this has basically different elders. So St. John Cassian, or Cassian, um, I think depending on how you want to say his last name, um, basically went through the desert and asked a bunch of elders different topics. And then these elders, these uh, uh, basically anchorites out in the desert would lecture on a certain topic. Um, so let's see if I can find the index here. But uh, it might not even have a regular index. So, but so one of the things that I really liked uh, was just the different topics that it talk about. So, like here we got first conference, the conference on the eight principal vices. So it's a lecture on the vices, and then uh, so seventh conference, the first conference of Abba. Uh, Serenus uh, on the changeableness of the soul and on evil spirits. So I know one of them um, that I really appreciated was uh, a lecture on discernment. I don't think they called it discernment, though. I think they called it, uh, oh, there's another uh, word that they use for it. Um, discretion, I think, is probably what the word that they used in here. But I come from a charismatic background, and like nobody really ever cares about discernment or uh, testing the spirits. And then uh, they would talk about uh, these uh, fathers would talk about how there would be a monk out in the out in the desert, and they'd see what he thought would be an angel, and the angel would say that you've reached such a holy life that you can no longer experience physical suffering or uh, any physical harm. And so this guy, this monk ended up throwing himself in a well and he was, I think, down there for like a day or so. And then the brothers had to pull him out and the guy ended up hurting himself so bad that he actually ended up passing away. And even when he died, he was still under the delusion. So uh, prelest is uh, it's commonly called. And I was just, I, as weird as it might seem, that was kind of encouraging for me because like, the Orthodox fathers and the desert fathers are extremely skeptical of spiritual encounters because they're always concerned that uh, they might suffer deception and that actually deception is very common. Where coming from a charismatic or Pentecostal background, you're basically told, well, or may, maybe not told, but the uh, attitude is that, you know, everybody's healing, everybody's doing miracles, everybody's receiving dreams and visions. And a lot of times it ends up basically boiling down to it's like it turns into the new age 
but with just Christian um, Christian terminology put over it. So anyway, uh, going on. So The Mountain of Silence uh, by Kyria uh, Akos Markides. This book is very good for introduction to Orthodox terms. So um, Markides is, is or was, I don't know if he's still working or not, but he was, a, I think, a sociologist in Maine at one of the universities there. So he comes from a fairly um, secular mindset, and you can pick that up quite easily in his book. But he interviews um, um, oh, um, in, in the book, it's, uh, I think, Father Maximus. Or, um, it, but in real life, Father Maximus is, uh, I don't know if he's Metropolitan, Athanasios, and I think it's a Vlimasol. Uh, but anyway, so he, uh, Father Maximus in the book is actually or, uh, a disciple of Elder Paisios. And so he, he covers the Orthodox spiritual life quite well in this book, brings up a lot of terms. This should probably be copied down and written down, so that way you got a list. Because building on this book here, then you can go to something like um, Vladimir Lasky's The Mystical Theology of the Eastern Church, and you'll already kind of have a basic uh, concept of the terminology that he'll bring up in that book. It's so like in The Mystical Theology of the Eastern Church, uh, Lasky will bring up Greek terms, and they won't be translated, and they won't have footnotes to what they are. So you kind of have to have a a knowledge of the Greek alphabet, and then what the terms are already. So this is a great beginner book, and I recommend it highly. This one should be able to be purchased on Abe Books for maybe five bucks. So I recommend this one. The other one, The History of the Church by Eusebius, or sometimes it's called Ecclesiastical History. Let's see if I can get a US or ISBN. Here's the ISBN on this one. Uh, this is hardback that I got. I think I bought this for cheap, like five bucks. So this one is very good for um, learning about church history, what happened after the book of Acts, and even fills in on some stuff that happened during the book of Acts. For example, it has the account of the martyrdom of St. James, the brother of the Lord, who is uh, my namesake. So... It gives his uh, account of his martyrdom, which you don't get in the New Testament. This is a very good book. I recommend it highly. It's the Orthodox Church by Timothy Ware. Sometimes it'll be Callistus Ware. Um, is good, at least with the edition that I read. I read an older edition. I don't know if it was the first public, first published edition or if it was like the second. But I've heard that the older ones are better and that the newer ones kind of update and modernize the book. Um, so I would kind of stay away maybe from later editions and try to get the oldest edition that you can find. So I'd, uh, this is one of the few books that's the introduction to orthodoxy or kind of just like the basics of what the Orthodox Church is that I really enjoyed and didn't have any major critiques. Um, for it. So I recommend that one. And then another one that I really liked was The Way of a Pilgrim. The Pilgrim Continues His Way. This one will introduce hesychasm and the philokalia and the orthodox spiritual life. It's written kind of like a journal. Um, I think it was written sometime in the mid-1800s, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe it might have been a bit earlier in the 1700s. But uh, so let me get ISBN if I have it here. I really recommend this book. It's uh, so this one's here by RM French. There's a bunch of different translations, and this is the one that I've read. And so this is a classic text on Orthodox spirituality. Um, I think the foreword was kind of new agey, but because um, the public uh, the publisher was not an orthodox publisher, seems like I'm not having any luck on finding an ISBN number. But I recommend it. Great read. Okay, so the next thing is prayer books. So I would recommend everybody to get at least one prayer book. So this one here, an orthodox prayer book, and this is I think. St. John, or New Rome Press, 
I think based here in uh, based in Missouri, yeah, in Columbia, Missouri. So this one has a, a good morning and evening prayer. It's fairly short. I recommend uh, to anybody who's looking at orthodoxy to try to establish a prayer rule. So that would be like you have a set uh, rule of prayer. And it normally will include the Trisagion prayers. And then Psalm 50, the Nicene Creed, and maybe some other prayers relating to the day or night depending on what one you're doing. I recommend a smaller rule of prayer, um, but of course, talk to your priest, or if you're looking into orthodoxy, maybe reach out to a priest um, online or in person. And this is the same book here, it's just a pocket version. I really like the pocket version, because um, it, it fits easily into a pocket. But uh, the smaller rule of prayer is easier to keep than having a prayer rule that's like 45 minutes long. So, But the Jordanville prayer book is the one I definitely recommend for doing pre-communion prayers. It's got, uh, let me see here, it's got the uh, canon. Let me see. Yeah, it's got a bunch of canons that can actually be put together. And make an even longer, um, longer prayer service before communion. So the order of preparation for Holy Communion, and I'll go through this whole thing, and then it goes through the ten prayers, and then it also has the Thanksgiving prayers at the end. So I really like that. So that basically covers. Uh, I might actually add one recommendation. Hold on a second. Okay, so I forgot all these pilgrim or penguin classics. So you got the penguin classics, the Live of the Saints. You also got one, Lives of Roman Christian Women. Uh, this one is maybe not necessarily a recommendation for beginners. Uh, and I think that's Adominan of Iona, but I'm not positive on that pronunciation. Uh, the Life of St. Columba. Early Christian Lives. Um... There's one on Alpha the Great, but then here's the one I was actually going to recommend, but uh, Early Christian Writings. So this will go into basically the writings that we have that are right after the uh, New Testament. So we got here the first epistle to Clement, of Clement, sorry, the epistles of Ignatius, the epistle of Polycarp, the epistle to Diognetus, the epistle of Barnabas, and the Didache. So the Didache is basically written at the same time that uh, the New Testament was. I think they think it was written around 50 AD or so. But uh, great, great resource for people looking into orthodoxy. So that pretty much concludes recommendations for, of the books I have anyway, and that I've read that uh, an inquirer should check out or some, a catechumen or anybody else that doesn't have any of these books. So I'll probably do some other videos of some other books because I have a uh, decent access to books, and so I can recommend those for anyone interested. So, God bless.